So hi guys, my name is On and I am the founder of Mindset Seed. Thank you so much for being here. We are so excited to have you on Halloween. So a brief overview about Mindset Seed. Mindset Seed is a nonprofit organization who promotes the growth mindset in the youth. And we not only advance education, but, but also self-actualization as we care about the mental health of students as well. So I am going to pass it on to Samantha to explain about today's session. Uh, so today we are making um, a calligraphy and um, Halloween-esque um, design of a cat and a pumpkin. And it'll be a super easy project. So all of you guys will be able to follow along and it will, and yeah, we're glad to have you here. It will be a picture of a cat in a pumpkin and I think you all will be pretty proud with the end result. So thank you all so much for coming. Absolutely, thank you, Samantha. So uh, I will do the drawing part and then, um, Katie, one of our art instructors will be doing the coloring and then Samantha will be doing the calligraphy part. So we cannot wait to get started. So if you guys have any, any questions during the drawing, feel free to unmute yourself or type in the chat. Either way will work fine. So let's get started. First, let's draw the pumpkin hat that the cat is wearing. I like to draw it like a bird on the side. So like a curvy M like this. And then there's like the top coil of the pumpkin. So on the middle M. And while you're doing this drawing process, it's really important to be aware of your surroundings and yourself. So I like to always be aware of what I'm holding, how my pen is, is it smooth, is it rough, or is it light or heavy? So my pen right now is pretty smooth, it's kind of heavy. And yeah, you should definitely do the same by asking yourself, how does it feel on your hand? So next, I like to draw curves in the pumpkin to make it feel like a piece that is cut out. And then now we'll start to draw the cat. So I like to draw like a half circle, a quarter of a circle. So like this. Wait, the sharing process is kind of slow right now. Uh, we'll try to stop sharing and start again. But while I'm doing this, it's also really important to take note of how you're feeling right now, how you'll bring your moods into your art. Because art and feeling are greatly connected. Okay, so let's get started. That's the half face of the cat. And now let's start to draw the other half. So a little bit up here, and then now we'll draw the ear. So like a triangle for the ear. And then another curve, just like this side. The lines don't need to be perfect because after all, some of the prettiest things are imperfect. And now just a detail for the ear. I will start to draw the body of the cat. So just two straight lines in the bottom. Now we start to draw a cat in the pumpkin. So just two straight lines from the body and then connect it to this part of the cat. And like this part of the pumpkin, let's start to draw curvy lines to represent a cutout pumpkin. And now let's start to draw the body of the pumpkin. So a curvy line again. 
and a curvy line. And here I would like to take a pause and just reflect on your art. How does it make you feel? Do you like the curvy lines or the bendy lines? Things like that. And then we'll continue to draw the body, the bottom of the pumpkin. So again, curvy lines. And then now we'll start to draw the details of our art. So I like to start with the cat first. So let's draw two eyes. It doesn't need to be two circles, just anything you like, maybe a line, a curve, things like that. And since right now it is extremely important to stay safe, of course, the cat has a mask on. Um, so let's start drawing the mask. I like to draw the um, parts of the mask first on the sides and then draw in the middle part. So the middle part would just be a really long curve, like, like that. And then the same for the bottom. And I like to give the mask like a character of the cat. So something that represents who it is. So I like to put a smile because this is a happy cat. And now the same with the pumpkin. I like to imagine the eyes of the pumpkin like a triangle because that's normally the shape that people carve it in. So a triangle like this like that. And then I like to give it a smile. Um, again, I think the sharing part is a little laggy right now, but um, you can just imagine the face of the pumpkin. What does a carved out pumpkin look like? So on my screen right now, I'm giving it a smile. So right now I'll pass it on to Katie to do the coloring part. Hi guys, um, my name is Katie and today I will be showing you multiple ways um, how to add color to your artwork. So here I have my cat drawing and I will be showing you guys how you can add color um, with either colored pencils, watercolor, or brush pens. Um, so to start with sort of like some background on each, um, colored pencils are um, for me the easiest to use because um, they are the easiest to um, fix mistakes with because you can just erase them. So I personally um, just like kind of the safety of colored pencils. Um, watercolor is a little tricky because it really depends on how much water you use, um, what it will look like on the paper. And then lastly, brush pens. Um, I really like brush pens. It does depend on what kind of paper you're using though, because um, uh, they might overlap and um, not look that good. But we're just gonna kind of try out all three today. So first I'm gonna start with um, my colored pencils. I am going to use an orange colored pencil to color my pumpkin. Now this is just standard, I feel like for, um, you know, pumpkins are orange, but again, this is art and art is subjective and you can make it whatever you want. So if you wanna color your pumpkin purple, you know, go ahead. That is awesome. So I'm just going to start off coloring my um, pumpkin orange. Um, all I can say really um, for how to do this is just use light strokes at first. The lighter the strokes you use or the lighter you color, um, the lighter it's going to appear on the paper and then you can 
kind of layer it. Um, if you do want to start off darker, that's fine too. That's another technique, but I personally like to start off light and then do multiple layers going in darker. So coloring with colored pencils is something that is a very meditative process. Um, a lot of people color to sort of forget about their stress um, because what it does is it focuses the mind on uh, this one task, which is just to color. And uh, so, yeah. So I'm just going to keep coloring my pumpkin orange. And then I will show you guys how you can add color using watercolor and brush pens. And while you guys are coloring, um, like An was saying, just think about, you know, how the, how the colored pencil feels in your hands, how you feel about the colors that you're adding to the paper, you know, what sort of emotions or feelings do they evoke. Um, the color orange is a very bright color, and so for me, it evokes a feeling of happiness. Um, so yeah, just keep on coloring. Um, enjoy it. It also is a time for you to um, sort of be alone with your thoughts, or if you like to listen to music, it's a great opportunity to uh, take time to listen to music. If you guys want to mute yourselves, I don't know if you're already muted, um, and play some music, that would be great. Um, so yeah, just keep coloring. And for the sake of time, since um, Samantha has another demonstration after this, I'm now going to move on to watercolor. But if you guys want to keep coloring using colored pencils, um, that's totally understandable. You guys continue to do that. I'm going to be showing you guys how to paint with watercolor. So first, you always wet your brush just a little bit. Just always start small. I say with art, you can always add more later. So wet your brush slightly and you are going to want to um, apply it to whatever color you want to use. So um, I'm going to just paint the stem and the top part of the pumpkin on the cat's head. Um, so I will be using orange and green for that. And um, the less water you use, um, the lighter the, <laughs> sorry, there's talking going on in the background. Um, the, okay, so the less water you use, um, the darker it's going to appear on your paper, but that also means the less water you're gonna have to sort of spread out um, the orange paint. Um, so, I'm just going to go in with a little bit of water because I want it to appear darker. Also, the more water you have on the paper, the longer it's going to take to dry. But again, it's really your choice. It's up to you. Um, so yeah, just go in with a little bit to start. And I'll show you guys kind of what I have at the end. Um, I don't have it completed, but I will still show you guys what I have. Um, and watercolor is something that takes time to learn. I am still not perfect at it. Um, it's one of my, well, I don't want to say least favorite mediums, but it's one that I don't, it's one that I, <laughs> um, kind of, I don't know, go to last. Um, so anyway. It is relaxing though. It is very methodical painting in watercolor, like with colored pencil. And again, you just wanna be 
you know, thinking about the colors you're using, what effect do they have on your mood? And now I will be going in with a little bit of green for the stem. And then I will be moving on to brush pens. And sorry, you guys um, can't really see what I'm doing right now. Um, but I think really how to use um, these mediums is pretty self-explanatory or it's pretty easy. Um, but if you guys need help or have any questions, feel free to unmute yourselves and ask. So now I'm just going into the stem. I accidentally used a little um, bit more water than I was anticipating on the stem. So it's gonna be a lighter shade of green, but that is okay. Okay. And lastly, I will be moving on to brush pens. So brush pens are uh, markers that are like brushes. That's why they're called brush pens. Um, so mine are kind of double-sided. They have like a thinner side. Uh, that's more for outlining. And then they also have this um, brush tip. Um, so it's very similar to using a paintbrush um, when you are using these pens. So today I will be using um, a purple, a light purple brush pen to fill out um, sort of the body of the cat. Okay, um, so here we go. Um, you can see it looks like a brush and it's very easy to use brush pens. You just color them just like you would use, you know, a, a colored pencil there. I did a little bit of coloring at the bottom, um, just like you would use a colored pencil. Um, that's how you use a brush pen. So just color. And again, you wanna be thinking about, you know, what you're doing, uh, your intentions. Uh, do you wanna take this time to sort of uh, escape from your hectic day? Um, also, again, the colors. Purple is um, actually a pretty lively color. So even though it is a cool color, um, but yeah. Also these colors are Halloween colors. So they make me think of Halloween and that makes me happy because I love Halloween. Um, so yeah, just continue to color with whatever medium you're using. Um, um, and if you wanted change mediums that is definitely done so yeah that's pretty much it for the coloring I'll show you guys um in a couple seconds um and I hope you guys enjoyed I will be passing it on now to Samantha to show you guys how to do calligraphy and here is my final product um, obviously <laughs> it's very incomplete but here is where I did some watercolor uh, the purple was the brush pens which was a little hard because of the mask I wanted to do that a different color but that's okay <laughs> and then um, the pumpkin at the bottom I used colored pencil so now Samantha you can take it away Thank you, Katie, sorry. So happy Halloween, everybody. Thank you all so much for coming. So today I wanted to show you three ways, three fonts to do calligraphy in. And you guys can see this paper. I first, oh, it's backwards. <laughs> but anyways, 
I first attempted to do a Halloween kind of font, and then I kind of do try to do a little silky, ghostly kind of font, and then afterwards I kind of did a traditional cursive kind of font. And um, even though I can't show you guys my paper, I decided um, it might be better for me to, I guess, display it on the big screen. And uh, I'll definitely show you the process of how to do it um, as we go. Um, if I'm going too fast, please let me know in the chat. You guys can always like type in the chat and let me know. Um, and yeah, okay, I'll just begin now. All right. So the cool thing about this, can you guys see the screen? Yeah? Yes. Okay, that's good. So the cool thing about this is that I could change the font of uh, my calligraphy strokes. And the cool thing about uh, that is that like when you're doing calligraphy, it's mostly important to uh, practice the strokes. Um, it's important to practice like the, the width and the length of the strokes. Some strokes are thicker and some are thinner. And that's what the beautiful cursive um, kind of uh, strokes like kind of like show. And I kind of wanted to just uh, show you guys what that looks like. Okay. So first we're gonna attempt to do a little Halloween font. And our little, the, the words that we're gonna write is, wear a mask to show kindness as we're mindset seed and it's Halloween. And I, you, some of you might go trick or treating. And um, if you guys do, be sure to wear a mask and show respect, keep six feet away from all trick or treaters. And uh, yeah. First little line. So first get like the outline kind of going. So this is the kind of W that you want. Oops. All right, I'll just stick to this then. But try to, so you got some of you guys, if you don't have calligraphy pens, that's perfectly okay. You guys can do it in Sharpie. It might be a little thicker, but try to keep your uh, wordings in different, like not just like one stroke, but try to attempt to make this part darker in one stroke. It's a little difficult for me since I'm on the computer, but it might be easier than you. So if this looks like ends up looking like a hot mess. I'm sure you guys all have done better than me. And there's going to be a lot of lines in this one. So be sure to darken the lines, especially. The, I mean, the little lines on the end. Because those will be our standout point in making this. All right. And then you guys can start out with the line first. It might be easier. And I might accidentally go a little fast just to save time. So if I'm going too fast, please just let me know in the chat and um, I'll take my time to slow down and explain things better to you.
So just again, outline it once and then do another stroke after to make it darker. One or two strokes would be fine. All right, next up. Oops. And as before, while you're doing this process, make sure to reflect on your progress. How is the artwork? And what do what does this font make you feel? For me, it does really scream Halloween because of its, I don't know, um, yeah, because of the lines that it, it is composed of. So try to really reflect on your artwork and yeah because every single line actually has meaning that you put into it. So it's largely important to uh, really be aware of your art and what it makes you feel and why you made that extra line or how does that extra line make you feel? So things like that is important to keep in mind throughout this process. So hopefully you guys are doing way better than me. It's a little more difficult. Some lines are made to be darker than others. So like on said, think about what each line does for like the painting, what it makes you feel. And to get our little spooky-esque um, font, we have to use every line and every shading and they all contribute to the bigger picture to create a creepy, well, not very creepy, but spooky atmosphere. Anyways, would you guys say that this kind of creates a pretty spooky atmosphere? So this is the first part where I'm going to show you guys. The next parts are uh, a little different. I'm going to show you how to do a little cute bubbly font. And then afterwards, I'm going to try to teach you how to do the traditional cursive font in this. But basically, uh, this um, kind of creates, hopefully, a spooky atmosphere. And uh, yeah, I hope you're happy with your Halloween-esque Want. Oh, and as I create the font, some cool things you guys could do with the letters is maybe you have um, a yellow, a yellow color pencil, a yellow marker. You guys could uh, shade in the little 
uh, insides of the font and um, it kind of does give off a little mood. Like if you shade in yellow with, I was practicing that earlier, if you shade in yellow with the font inside the words, it kind of creates a more like a haunted house-esque um, figure. And I thought that was really cool how like just adding colors could kind of change the complete atmosphere, but you guys could play around and uh, see what kind of mood you guys end up. If it's not Halloween, uh, you may probably still, it's probably still very festive. And um, I, as long as you're happy with what you're doing and um, you're creating something that makes you feel good about yourself. All right. This one might be the easiest font to learn. Can I make this brush thicker? Hmm. All right, I'll just do it this way then. Keep all your letters in this one the same size. and keep them all organized and like following a little pattern so that it's kind of, hold on. So that it's kind of, whoops. Following within the line by line format, like, you know, so it's like very straight. That's a horrible line. Oh, I can make it darker. So I just wanna show you guys what I was talking about earlier. Let's see. One second. Hmm. All right, I'll just explain it to you instead. You guys can use maybe a yellow highlighter to fill in the little holes over here and over here. And in doing so, if you do that, then it's kind of cool because um, you get to like fill in the inside and it kind of brings out a sharp contrast to the black and kind of gives some more, what I'd say, black and white kind of Halloween haunted house kind of feeling. And I thought that was really cool. So you guys could try to experiment that. Maybe you guys could change, pur put purple in there and it kind of gives a more elegant kind of feeling um, and portrays a, like a darker mood and I just thought that it was really cool to let you guys know in case you wanted to experiment because after all this is your drawing and uh not mine so feel free to do whatever you want all right last of all we'll do we'll do the traditional cursive font so since my I can't really all right first long strokes so just make one large stroke down one large stroke down, long strokes going down. And then short strokes like that. Make sure that long strokes you have are going down. So you could kind of see kind of like a little sharp contrast and while we're doing this try to think about like how um changing the size um the length and size of these fonts can kind of change the overall like portrayal of what it's trying to convey like the cursive font all
Why not double dip on your lines and just like try to do the both strokes in one stroke? And hopefully it's, um, since this is the computer, it's a little different, but you should try to kind of like get like, you know how um, when you're swinging a ribbon around, like maybe some people um, and like, I don't know, performers swing ribbons around. It kind of creates like like different layers and volumes of like rolls. And I feel like that's what calligraphy is trying to do to create with its letters. All right, almost um, done. Oh, sorry. And um, can I add something, Samantha? Yeah, of course. Um, the brush pens that I was using earlier, um, they're really good for calligraphy because they allow you to kind of have that um, thickness in some areas and then thinness in others. And that's like what they're especially used for, so. Thank you, Katie. All right, I guess we're done with this. And um, you got, well, you guys could have put this like font near your pumpkins or just anywhere around your card. But um, I hope you guys are happy with hopefully your finished result. And I'll give you guys a few more minutes to finish up. And uh, while you're doing that, I just would like to say, um, don't forget, you could always submit your artwork to um, mindsetseed at gmail.com and we could probably put it in a community gallery. And hold on, let me stop sharing for a second. Is it still sharing? No, okay. So just to remind you of our mindfulness program, um, during the stressful time of disconnection and quarantine, I believe our mental health is probably the most essential right now. And um, Mindset C, we encourage art because it is a natural way to practice mindfulness as we incorporate um, colors, textures, and sounds to try to re radiate uh, positivity in participants and hopefully relieve your stress. So as you guys are finishing, we'll give you guys probably like two more minutes to um, finish up your artwork. Um, I hope you guys will think about these concepts and um, uh, really reflect on it. And also, um, we hope that you, we were able to just at least take some time to relieve your stress on such a, a stressful day, like on a such a stressful like and uh, tough time. And yeah. Thank you all so much for coming. And um, we're, we're very grateful that you came here during Halloween. Uh, we hope you guys have a lovely Halloween and um, get lots of candy. And well, actually don't get lots of candy because it's quarantine. But if you are to trick or treat, be sure to wear a mask and show your kindness. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, absolutely. Like Samantha said, everyone should be really proud of their artwork. And just a reminder, repeat, uh, echoing what Samantha said, feel free to submit your artwork to mindsetseed.gmail.com or through our Instagram or Facebook page. All, all of it is called the Mindset Seed or even through LinkedIn is fine too. Um, yeah, and everyone should be really proud of their artwork. Um, personally, I am pretty proud of mine. And yeah, just as a last reminder, please make sure to visit mindsetseed.org. And if you enjoyed this session, feel free to book another session with us through mindsetseed.org uh, slash mindfulness sessions. Yeah. So thank you to Katie and Samantha for instructing us through today. <laughs>